Hello everyone, how are we doing? Welcome, my name is James Welsh, I am the author of Corroborating Evidence, UFO Investigation of the Millennium, published on July 8th, 2014. Today's date is now the 5th of June, 2022. And without any further ado, we're going to go to NASA Frame STS-103-74-58. See this craft that you see in front of you? This is identical to the craft which is seen on NASA Frame 59, which I am about to present evidence of. So let's go to frame 59. Boom. And while we're doing that, let's have a look at this thing in the background. So here's this craft here. And uh, now we will pull up NASA frame 59. So I've cropped that area out. Obviously here we will see it. And we can zoom in on this in a wee second. So, what is this? Oh, well, it only took me 10 years to figure it out, but when I figured it out, it was absolutely beautiful. So, um, here we have the craft in the background of that NASA image. If I just cut back now to NASA frame 69 files, we will find the headlight detail that I first discovered on August the 31st, 2012. So here it's here. Uh, so we'll find this in a wee second if this decides to open up. NASA have got me back on the fags. These are killing me NASA more ways than one. So here we have that detail which is captured on STS 103-74-69. And if I bring this over, reduce it in size, adjust that, we have the matching symmetrical opposite side to the one just above the left hand side of that oval. So now we go to my Project Wheelbarrow folder. And Project Wheelbarrow was the name of the little exercise I undertook in 2018. Uh, trying to build up a better profile of the craft by using all of the available information on the various NASA mission images and I tried to reconstruct a better profile of the craft by using all of this information through all of the mission photographs to try and build up a better idea of what this thing actually looked like. So. In 2018, I took frame 59 and I took frame 69 and I performed a partial double overlap. And when I did, and when I lined up the curvature of the craft here, that you see, with the area at the bottom of frame 59, um, I realised that I had accidentally matched the area within the yellow circle that I identified in 2012 with the area here seen in the red circle and this was matching symmetrical opposites. These are the front headlights of the craft. This wasn't properly identified. I established and identified this area as matching but at the time I still wasn't sure if these dark areas, these dark circles were either forward thrusters, like reverse thrusters, or if they were lights, I didn't know what they were until last summer, when uh, Ed Barton's description of what he encountered on the 5th of January suddenly rang a bell in my head, and then all sorts of information that I'd acquired over the course of 20 years suddenly all came to fruition. So I established without any doubt that this craft here, seen on NASA frame, 59 is indeed a solid physical craft in orbit 
Um, and that oval white light that you see there is the spotlight which is situated at the front of these craft. Now, I don't know what NASA mission frame we were on just a minute ago. 59 we were on. Okay. So, we've established now that this is the headlights and the spotlight which is located at the front of this craft. And if you bear with me a second, I will show you that headlight housing which is there. It's also seen repeated in a partial projected double image of the craft which is seen here. And you can see there that looks like a motorbike headlight. And that is basically um, the big spotlight which is situated at the front of this craft. As seen and reported all across the globe during December 1999 and into January 2000 in Illinois. So, last summer, um, after going through these mission images again and reviewing the Illinois material, uh, I came to understand that both of these events were linked together along with my own personal observations during December 1999. So I've established that the craft, which is seen in the back of NASA frame STS-103-74-59, um, has its spotlight on, and is indeed one of these solid physical craft, because I have matched up this headlight area with the, uh, the right-hand side headlight, uh, which is seen on NASA frame 59. So, this wasn't the only craft in orbit with Discovery during that time. Now, as I say, there it is in the background with its spotlight activated. This spotlight is also seen in NASA frames uh, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53. And we'll just go to 51 just now. And we will see the spotlight in operation. This is also the same thing that Ed Barton observed. That is not the sun. If that was the sun, all life on Earth would be dead. Okay, because the sun does not appear 323 miles up in orbit. Okay, it's a little bit further away. And that is not the sun. Not the sun. Um, I worked out the sunrise and sunset calculations and this happened about 8 minutes before sunrise occurred and this thing appears, keeps its light on or, uh, the orbiter for about 2.5 minutes before switching that light off uh, and this was all before apparent sunrise took place. So I've established that the craft in frame 59 in the background is exactly that, a craft. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out, um, and a lot of people are saying on the James Webb uh, page on Facebook, you know, oh, how come the media don't know about this, eh? but you do? Oh, it's because I've uh, not told the media. That'll be why. So this has all been formulating and building up until now, and now I'm releasing all this information. So if the media don't want to know about it, it's because they're not doing their fucking jobs. That's the long and short of it. And people need to remember that the world's media are controlled by about six different companies. So, and we have, what, how many news organisations these days? So, don't give us that. Um, you honestly like, think they're going to allow this information to just come out in the media? Really? No, it's down to people like me putting out posts on YouTube, Facebook, creating websites to present this information to inform the public. So, I don't really appreciate all the trolling of uh, ignoramus psychophants uh, that believe every word that NASA tell them. So, Bill Nelson's uh, an established liar. He lied to the entire human race when he says that they don't know what these things are, which is a blatant lie. And uh, I'll be putting out a lot more information over the coming few days on the build-up to the anniversary of the UAPTF preliminary assessment on UAPs, which is a bag of shite, and for those of you that don't already know, UAP stands for Universally Accepted Piffle, and I'm not wearing it, and I'm not accepting it, and you shouldn't either.